everybody and welcome to another Thursday Thinks. Today is all about horses winter coats and rugging. So hello those who haven't met me before my name is mary and I'm the founder of Naturally Willa which is a source of information to help you to heal your horse mind body and soul naturally. So I've got a little bit of a different setup today, I don't think you've noticed, or you might have done, um, just because my laptop has decided it can't find the Wi-Fi. So I'm going off my phone, so this should be fun. <laughs> so obviously winter is now in full swing, and that means that my herd, for certain, have got a very fluffy coat. Um, the Majors is the least fluffiest, but that's mostly because of his breeding, he is a Belgian warm blood, so he's got quite a lot of dainty creature in him. And obviously dainty creatures don't particularly have the thickest coats sometimes. Sometimes. Whereas if you look at Little Spring, I'm calling her my little pom-pom at the moment because she's such a fluff ball. You put your fingers in her fur and your hand just disappears, you're like, you kidding. <laughs> so... When it comes to winter coats, I know that some people clip them and it is something that I considered in the past, especially when I first had the Major, <clears throat> because he was my first, my first boy, he was my first horse and he was initially part of the riding school, he was on working livery so he had to work for his supper effectively so I didn't have to pay so much for him you know <laughs> struggling person that I was or still am no. so he was on working livery so he was being ridden several hours a day by other people um so he was clipped for his own comfort and when it came to me having him to myself I clipped him because I thought that that was what you did I thought that that is what was most appropriate. You clipped them, then you rubbed them. Whereas now I think about it, now that I've got the five that I have, and I've had older horses, I've had younger horses, I've had bigger horses, I've had skinny horses. Uh, I've been through the majority of like options, shall we say. And I don't think it's necessary. And I'll tell you why. So your horse obviously creates its own coat and based on the nutrition that it's had over the past several months, as well as what their bodies consider the winter coming up to be, they might throw out a really good coat. Um, and that really good quality coat is something that you want them to benefit from. They've grown it. They've used all their time and energy to do it, and it's the best option for them because it's what nature's provided. And when you think about it, if your horse gets cold, all they have to do is fluff up their coat. They, they just raise the fur and it traps the warm air, the body heat, in. And I find this is particularly very interesting when you've had a really, really cold snap and it's uh, snowed or it's got so frosty that you can actually see the frost on your horse's fur and on their tails and it's just it's really pretty and last like last winter I took a lot of photos of it especially of like Pagan and Midnight with their tufty ears and it was just beautifully dusted white on the edges and it's just so pretty but that is a sign that they've got a really really good coat because the the outer edges are freezing which means that the body heat isn't escaping through their fur it's being maintained within the fur so that it doesn't escape obviously if it was escaping the water wouldn't crystallize on their fur at all when i first saw it i thought oh my god they must be freezing because they've got ice on them like i would think you know if i had ice on my skin i'd be freaking freezing put 10 jackets on me but no, no, I stupidly whacked a rug on her when <laughs> it's okay, you'll be warm in a minute. And then they got colder because the ice melted because the rug was holding in the heat and it was making the, the it just wasn't good. It wasn't the best idea ever. So as my experience changed and developed, I realised that it was actually a good sign that they had frosted fur. And it made me think even more about why we clip 
and why we rug. Now, when I first had the major, I had a rug for him, and even when he had a decent coat and he wasn't clipped, I would still whack a rug on him because I thought, I'm cold. I'm cold, so he must be cold because he's out here all freaking night. Now, at the time, he was stabled, so he didn't have movement, which means that, yes, he technically got colder. <laughs> and it's something that I'm seeing, especially now, that he's on a track system. All night and all day, he's got movement, constant movement, if he wants it. And he does. He constantly goes round and round and round, only stopping to munch and pee. Which is exactly what a wild horse would do. So he is keeping his body producing heat through standard movement, which is keeping the gut moving, which is keeping his internal furnace rocking and rolling. So even though he's got the thinnest coat out of my entire herd, I don't rug him. And the only time that I do put a rug on him is when it is freezing cold and raining because he can't cope with it because he's, uh, he's 28 years old and he just needs that little extra help. But the number of times that's happened in the last what five years, probably about once every two years. And in saying that, he has the rug on for a single night and then you can guarantee the next morning he is at the gate going, get this thing off me, get it off, I don't want it. So it's really, really interesting because if I take, if I even show him his rug and he's not cold or he's not wet or, you know, the combination of both, the, the sweet spot where he needs it, he's gone. If I even try and walk up to him, his head's throwing, he's trying to imitate that he's going to bite you. So you're like, okay, buddy, I understand. The only other time that will accept a rug on is a waffle rug when it is really, really pouring it down and they haven't, he hasn't had a chance to dry out and it is windy. Then I can put a waffle rug on him. And it's the same with the rest of the herd. When they come in and it is cold or blowy and I know that they're going to get chilly, especially midnight. Um, I think I put the photo up. I think it was beginning of this year. I put a waffle rug on a... <laughs> all of my herd have a waffle rug. And they, there's also blankets, as in old blankets that we don't use in the house anymore. And those are purely for when they get wet to help them dry out so that they can warm themselves up and dry themselves out even faster, if that makes sense. So beginning of this year, midnight came into the yard and I was like, something's wrong with you. I'm not sure what it is, but I'll keep an eye. She started eating and I realised that her muscles were twitching. I thought, That's not right. And then I realised it was getting worse and she was really starting to shiver and shake. I was like, okay you're cold it was absolutely peeing down with rain and it was windy and i thought okay i can see that you're cold so all i did was take her waffle rug and just put it over her i think i might have done the first strap up because it kept flapping open and like she wasn't entirely happy with the flappiness but i just did it up to the loosest that i could she stayed stayed there had her hay net by the time she'd had her hay net she was asking me to take it off she was poking at me and i thought okay girl so I took it off she dried out enough that she could finish drying herself out without feeling too cold and that's all that they seem to need that's my herd anyway if you have your horses you might have a different feeling or they might have a different preference especially if you've got something like a thoroughbred who's a dainty creature who might need a bit of extra help but even thoroughbreds can produce <coughs> can produce a really really good coat so it's just about for me from my experience, good nutrition. Good nutrition and trusting your horse to be know, it, know what it needs to do, trusting their body. Now, I know from my herd that I've got, sometimes it does take a couple of years for their body to trust the good nutrition that they've got, to trust the healthiness that they're, they're dealing with. When I first had spring, the first year that I had her, she whacked out a load of coat, a load, like she was going to be really freaking freezing. And it's the same with Midnight. 
her first coat was so long, her first winter coat that I had with her was so long, so thick, and she was just boiling all the time. But even in those situations, I don't clip. Because I don't know Mother Nature. I don't, well, <laughs> I'm connected with Mother Nature, Green Witch, hello. But I don't know what she's going to do. I don't know what her plans are. So whilst they may seem just a little bit warm on one day, the following days they need their coat. And if I clipped off just for that single day, I would then be subjecting them to issues for the rest of the, the time until the next coat grows through, which isn't fair just for a single day. Now, I know that some people clip because their their horses are in that much work and if they're in that much work and they better uh, benefit more from it, okay. But if you're just riding your horse on a hack or similar, why do it? Because then you're constantly walk, watching the weather, you're constantly poking at your horse going, are you warm enough? Are you cold? Are, are you too hot now? Or you're watching the weather going, oh, it was sunny a minute ago, now it's peeing down. He's got the wrong rug on now. Because that's extra work for you. Not to mention extra pennies to buy those fancy rugs. So I don't see the point in putting that much energy in when the horse can do it for you. Now, that being said, the one, one horsey type creature that I wish that I had clipped sooner was Princess. Now Princess had cushions and severely so. So, and there's a video about her on the YouTube channel, go check that out. I've mentioned her a lot on several things, especially in the Facebook page. But she had severe cushings and that meant that she was sweating most of the time because her body was out of whack it didn't understand that it was warm it thought it was cold and then it would sweat which would make her colder which makes it think that it's warmer so it sweats some more and it was just it was just nuts so i would spend ages there with her brushing out all the thick coat brushing out the curls that had grown in her coat and it it didn't truly help her it helped her to some extent i did end up extend um straightening out some of her fur but the Cushing's had curled her fur so much and it was so thick because it was a Cushing's coat. It was just retaining everything and it was just, it wasn't the best thing for her. Now I tried to improve the quality of her coat through her diet, which worked to some extent. But the best thing that I could have done for her was to clip her. Now I did that in the end. I did clip her. She had a full clip and she, she really enjoyed it. She was really enjoying the vibration of the clippers on her skin. She enjoyed the um, the um, sponging down that I gave to her afterwards. And then she refused to have a rug on. I, I initially put a rug on her. And if anybody else has a miniature Shetland, you know how hard it is to source a miniature Shetland rug. So... It's not the easiest thing, miniature. I can see why people don't actually make, not many brands make miniature Shetland rugs because it is so specialist. Not everybody does clip for miniature Shetland. Sometimes they're just companions. But when it came to Princess, she really, really needed that clip for her health and for her hygiene and everything else. So it was for the best thing for her. So in those sort of medical situations, I can see why a full clip and then rugging is the best option. Now, she refused to wear her rug after a certain point, which I can understand when you've had a thick coat on that's retained everything and it's made you feel absolutely vile. Why would you want something else put on you? You've finally got freedom on your skin. Let's just let it free. <laughs> So in her situation, in medical situations like that, I can see why you would do that. But as I say, my herd isn't in full time work. I have two, I have three youngsters, which are still doing a lot of groundwork. I'm getting that really, really solid, getting that foundation in. And obviously Egypt is having these lung issues at the moment or recovering from those. So it's not the best option to do extensive amount of work with them. And my older two are... They just get to love life. So 
I don't do that amount of work to make it the best option for them. But I don't know what I would do in a situation where they were doing that much work. And for me, they'd have to be doing an extensive amount of work for it to be a viable option for me. Just as I said, because clipping can be a little bit of a drama, when, especially when a horse hasn't gotten used to it, doesn't know what it is. And then there's the whole drama of the rogging. You know, I'm very, very lucky in that my horse is just outside my window. But I will get so in my head in the middle of the night going, has he got the right rug on? Has she got the right rug on? Why well, she not like it? Or she's taking it off. What if they've wrecked it? I spent all that money on those frigging rugs and they've just broken it. And that's what happens sometimes. And then there's the whole situation of they don't want it sometimes. They don't like it sometimes. Especially the Major, now that he's got the ability to voice an opinion, he does voice it. Now, I don't know if I fully clicked him out, whether he'll go, yep, whack it on me, let's do this. Or what? I don't know. We would have to see. But he's never going to be in that much work to to warrant it. So, yeah, swings and roundabouts. Swings and roundabouts. So, <clears throat> let me just check what's going on over here. Nobody with me? Hello, brother mine. <laughs> um, so, yes. <laughs> My horses have a very th thick coat because they are... <laughs> higher. Because they are well well nourished so that they produce those thick coats and i trust their bodies to do what they need to do if you do something differently that's good for you this is what works best for me so i hope that's given you a little bit of insight into what i do and why if you're giving giving you some food for thought then great if not cool too so I think that's it for me today. I'll catch you all again next week for my next Thursday Thinks. I'll let you know what the cough topic is as soon as I think of it. <laughs> and then um, publish the event on the Facebook page and share it onto my own Facebook page. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and click the bell icon so you get notification about all future videos. There's a archive of these Thursday Thinks over there. So if you want to backdate by all means check that out. Also check us out on Instagram when actually underscore Willa for virtually daily updates on the herd. And don't forget to join the Facebook group as well. It's a great little community over there. And I know I've had a break now for the past month, but I will be starting to put things in there for you all. So stay tuned. And also my latest article in the Barefoot Horse magazine has been published. So it is all about rose hips. So if you're not um, subscribed to the Barefoot Horse magazine, I hope you're considering it. And also check out my article in there. I'm so proud of that one. So that's it for me today. Thank you everybody for being with me and I'll see you all again soon. Bye.